Hi everyone, my name is Jenny Roth and I'm the Marketing Communications Manager for MSA's Field Server product line. Thanks for joining us today for our webinar all about our new dual Ethernet port device and the security features that come along with it. Uh, this pre presentation will take approximately 30 minutes and then we'll have time for questions at the end. If you do have a question, please post it to the Q&A panel on the screen and I'll read the questions to Richard at the end of the presentation. Please be advised that this session is being recorded for those who couldn't be here and for use later. And with that, I'd like to introduce the MSA Field Server Product Manager, Richard Theron, to tell us all about it. Go ahead, Richard. Thanks, Jenny. Um, much appreciated. And um, welcome, everyone. Um, thanks for carving some time out of your day to join a, another presentation. Um, we're pretty excited about this product and uh, where we're going with um, our offerings in the uh, cybersecurity realm. What I'd like to do is just go over the agenda quickly. Um, we did a little bit of a recap in field safe and uh, what we're doing going forward with, with the field safe. Um, obviously the product update, what the new product consists of and what we've, what we've done. And then going to some of the, the applications um, how this product uh, will, what we envisage will be used in the field and um, the features that it supports um, within that market. And then to touch on um, some of the security features, go into the vertical markets, and then we took the opportunity since we got you online to see, let you know about the uh, rebranding um, of the products. And then um, at the end, the, uh, the Q and A section. So let's jump, jump straight in. Field safe. They are, Constantly are uh, issues out there. I think no one can um, argue that um, cybersecurity is on the tips of people's tongues. As soon as you connect things um, with an Ethernet port, you connect to the Internet. And cybersecurity is not just the Internet. Um, people within organizations and especially in things like data centers. If you walk in with an Ethernet port, um, you know, you can't connect to anything. The people are worried because you bring their laptop that you might have had at home, been learning things onto it, you connect to the network um, and things can go wrong very quickly. We had even had an incident in, the, um, in our office and uh, in Milpitas about, about, about two or three years ago, we had a video camera um, to just for conference calls. And one day we fired it up and, and uh, we had a, a notification on it. You know, you've been hacked, look at your security, we like, whoops. Needless to say, we got rid of the camera and got a new one in there. And then in today's times as well, many people are working uh, remotely. Um, so that remote access is required, which brings um, the uh, security standards um, to the forefront. Uh, and an application that we've um, come across at um, Stanford University, this was a while ago, they, they were sort of you know, the leaders in this. They've got a number of high value assets, um, you know, big boilers, generator sets, um, just to name but a few. And what they've said to their suppliers is that, you know, I'll give you the connection to come in remotely. You need to fine tune this thing. You need to monitor this thing. You've got the, the contract. Um, and, and what they've given them is um, instant access um, to the customers to resolve this thing. You don't have to schedule a truck call, a truck roll, I should say, in a couple of weeks. Um, it's uh, quickly um, connecting to it. And especially for the, you know, the field service security is why. Um, as I've indicated, you know, we connect to local networks. Um, when we get into sensitive sites, uh, it could be government, it could be data centers, um, there are a variety of applications. And because of some of the uh, features that we have on the um, fields of a bridge, uh, um, VPN, um, proxy tunnel, uh, cloud connectivity, notifications. Um, you know, we many of the fields of bridges are now connected and uh, up up into the internet. Last year we released um, FieldSafe. Um, I'll touch a little bit on FieldSafe a little bit later. And we are continually going down this path with regard to the um, cybersecurity from. Um, a field server which we deemed field safe that is a brand name that we've taken to it and we've just recently released a two ethernet port 
um, and we'll touch into um, that shortly. Uh, excuse me, physical separation, writing and, and uh, firewalling, and all that will be explained. And to continue down the road with regard to um, cybersecurity, um, the uh, BACnet International uh, last year released BACnet SC, which is an extremely secure protocol now. Um, it, is, it is based on um, certificates, so therefore you need a, a certificate to connect to the network. In the past, with, uh, or with BACnet IP, you can just get any um, BACnet Explorer, plug the network, you can see the network, you can even make changes onto it. Now with BACnet C, that won't work unless you have a signed certificate um, for your laptop to connect to that network and it is extremely secure. So that is just internal um, to a corporation. But there, there's a couple more features in back, back in SE, and uh, it does connect to the internet. Um, you know, going along our cybersecurity um, vertical, we will be releasing back in SC next year, just to continue on our um, security um, that we offer. Uh, now to go into the new product. We're very excited about this. So it, it's, it's the same form factor as we've had with, um, with uh, the, this uh, product range. Um, the big difference is it's got um, two ethernet ports on it. The, um, the previous version to this is one ethernet port. You see it's still got the, the, the two serial ports on it. So we can connect um, all four of those ports um, for protocol connectivity um, and or uh, firewalling. So it's got two um, 10 uh, 100 um, base T um, Ethernet ports, Ethernet 1, Ethernet 2, LAN or WAN, which we'll touch on to shortly. When we went into the hardware redesign, we looked at it and our applications are be becoming more intelligent. And we get more and more intelligence put into the configurations. And although we didn't need it at the moment, we thought, you know, in a year to two's time, we definitely are going to need a stronger processor. So let's get that pro a stronger processor or a faster processor in now um, just to assist us um, with the bigger applications that we have um, to better uh, meet our customer needs. I touched on briefly about the uh, rebranding, and we have um, started that. And within the GUI as well, because we had to go in there and add in configuration for the second Ethernet port. So we've really started the new look and feel in the GUI. And that's going to happen over the next um, couple of months as we update our um, GUI with, within, the, um, within the field server. It, it's in the web page that is built into the um, field server product. In the um, two Ethernet port and across um, the other products, we have now offered um, a feature, a routing feature. So we can route um, to different subnets and then um, firewalling. So we have the ability to firewall in, especially, and that's for just for the two Ethernet port. Uh, as a typical application, you know, connect to the internet, um, it's just to make the, the um, product that bit um, safer. Now to go into applications. Um, you've got a couple of slides just going over the different applications. We believe the um, two Ethernet port uh, fits in well. We've had a two Ethernet port in the past, the, um, the FSB 3510. That is going to end of life. Um, it's been around for quite a while, so it does very well. And it'll go into end of life next year. It won't be available. And the two Ethernet port will pick up um, some of the uh, applications that the 3510 has assisted us with for uh, many years. And one of the ones is um, connecting two different uh, subnets together. If you think of a, a factory, factory is, is it a building? It's building automation. So building automation typically runs on Python IP and the industrial automation, you know, it could run Modbus TCP IP, it could run Ethernet IP, could be GE, GD. And you can get those two networks connected you know, via IT, but then you'll open up um, that port. It will just, what's on the one subnet just opens up to the second subnet, or you could you know, filter it through ports 
um, or actual IP ports, so just all back net traffic. But that's quite a bit, um, and I don't think people, you know, either part of, of the um, of the corporation, want so much data onto those networks. So it gives us the ability, it gives the end users the ability to say connect one subnet um, to another subnet. And then going on um, from the previous slide, and when connecting two subnets together, we've had a, a number of um, uh, applications. We want to do a reduced data set because you don't want to flood um, the other subnet that you are connecting to. So you don't want all the traffic from subnet one to subnet two. We've had applications in the past where you would have backed an IP network uh, and it's all set up and it's working well, um, which is the, the control network. And then you have the, the public network with, with an operation and they typically will not want all those backnet objects um, being exposed um, to people within the organization because they start to change um, different backnet objects, it could uh, pose issues. So, you, you know, you might just have your, um, your uh, temperature set point main made available or um, a couple of backnet objects, but the rest of them are behind um, the field server. And obviously the big one with two Ethernet ports is um, a LAN and WAN. Um, and for the fields of applications, because of um, cloud connectivity, uh, proxy tunnel, VPN, and notifications going up into the cloud, you need that physical barrier. Um, it just adds another layer of security um, to the connection between a LAN and a WAN, um, just to give the confidence to um, the IT department and people within the organization when connecting a, a field server bridge uh, to a corporate network. And specifically for OEM customers, in the last couple of years, I said a couple of years, let me take it back, I'd say in the last 10, 12 years, a lot of our OEMs have moved to Ethernet-based products. So if you've got, you know, as you can see, a Honeywell boiler controller, um, the new ones now have Ethernet IP on. So if you're connecting to an Ethernet IP network, yep, no problem, plug into the network, which is fine. But now you want it to go into a BACnet IP network and you need a field server bridge. So with one Ethernet port, you'd have to put a switch in there. So you plug the the um, honey, the, the Honeywell um, controller into the switch, the field server bridge into the switch, and then you plug the the local backnet IP network into the switch as well. And, and that gets a little bit costly. You're losing panel space. Now the two Ethernet port, um, you don't need a switch within the um, within the um, boiler panel itself. You just plug the uh, controller into um, uh, Ethernet one, the LAN port, and on the second port, you you, you plug it into the um, the um, BMS network. It solves it um, pretty quickly. And we've got we've had more products um, just recently. Um, one of the companies that we work with in the fire alarm panel um, space, they now their latest fire alarm panel has uh, Ethernet port. And it's another prime example how we assist companies like that um, by connecting um, a, the product to the actual network, uh, and both with the, obviously the product's got an Ethernet port into it, in it. So security. This is going to more about the LAN WAN uh, connectivity. So when you go into um, the configuration and you're setting up the second Ethernet port, Ether2. It is the ability to go to LAN mode, or it comes standard with LAN, or you can switch it into WAN mode. So in LAN mode, it's just normal protocol translation, connecting one, one network to another network is fine. But in WAN mode, WAN mode it only allows out, an outgoing connection. So from the filter bridge, you want to connect to the cloud, it will allow that. Everything else is firewalled. So if you want to come into Ethernet 2, you can't do it. It prevents it. I'm sure there are really questions like, but yeah, I want to get to Ethernet 2 with my browser. Or Ethernet 2, I want to connect to a local BMS or a different network. Um, we'll go into that um, next. Um, 
in the, in the next slide, we'll we'll go into that, the configuration of that and, and how we actually achieve that. And within the unit as well, we can actually block um, VPN and proxy tunnel connections um, coming into the um, the field server bridge. As I indicated, we'll go into configuration shortly of how to connect a um, a subnet when the field server is um, has the Ethernet 2 selected in WAN mode. Okay, now we're getting into the um, configuration um, of that um, of Ethernet 2, specifically for incoming connections. So on the right, you're looking at the configuration page, which is the, the web page built into the um, field server product. So you go in, we can set up the IP address, you can set up the HTTP, you can set up subnets, um, DNS servers, and then you have the ability to set in routing tables. So in this example here, in the IP address, we've got a star, star basically meaning all IP addresses with port ports. ADN443 is web browsers. So it'll allow any product with a web browser to browse to it. And if you could say, well, no, I don't want to be open up as much as that, and I can put an arrange in. I can say, you know, 192.168.1.3 to, you know, 1.40. Uh, as an example, you could do that, or specific subnet. And then in this example, we've got port 1024. That is uh, the field server toolbox. So that is allowing that connection to come in um, via Ethernet 2. Another example could be, you know, if you had Modbus TCP IP, so you had to put the port range in of 502, and you might have a specific IP address as well. Um, you could have back then IP, um, 47808 is the port number for that, or sometimes they use um, 809, so it'll allow that connection in. And then once that is the routing setup, you can also have the ability to block um, VPN connections coming in and um, proxy tunnels. So it just gives people an extra bit of security that, you know, because in all fields of bridges, we do have the ability to um, connect via VPN um, and it can be blocked if, if required. So we're giving the end users a lot of um, uh, configuration options um, for uh, routing and for firewall. Then to continue on to, um, on to routing. So in the, in all products now, we now have the ability to do routing. You need just with one Ethernet port. So if you have one Ethernet port connected to a subnet, you could see all those devices on that subnet. But if that subnet was connected to another subnet, if you had a, you know, if you had um, equipment on, the sub, on that subnet, you couldn't get to it. You had to get out the, um, the local IT people to open up ports, uh, which they tend to push back on. So now with the routing, you can configure Ethernet 1, say, listen here, yes, I've got device on, on subnet 1, which is great, I can get to, but now you point the um, field server towards the router um, between subnet 1 and subnet 2. That is done in the configuration page, as we've shown here, and you can get to those devices. So essentially, the field server bridge could be polling device on subnet 1 and on subnet 2, and then doing the protocol translation onto subnet three. It's just an additional feature that we have added into the um, field server bridge um, for more complex uh, applications in the field. I just wanted to do a recap on, um, on security, the security features that um, we've implemented, um, we implemented last year that are available across all products. We went through our penetration testing, and which was quite a um, quite a task, but we got through it uh, very successfully. So we've updated the password requirements um, on all the units. We have a unique password um, on the label of the unit. You use a, that unique password to log into the unit. You can change the um, admin password. You can set up uh, different users at different levels. We've um, encrypted the, um, the, the, the individual's details in it. 
And that is very relevant um, because of um, bills that certain states um, have introduced with regard to privacy. So your personal details are encrypted and they can't be um, hacked. The Californian bill is SB 327, which is um, which was introduced uh, beginning of last year. Basically says is you need to encrypt um, uh, personal details. And California is not the other one. It's in New York, uh, Washington, and a number of other ones that are that are falling out. They aren't in place. And they, not just that, there are many standards that are coming out. Um, there are IEC standards that are out uh, in industrial automation, and more vertical markets are now requiring um, security standards uh, for any devices that are connected um, to their networks. We've updated the security um, between the browser um, with regard to the certificates that we support when connecting to the um, field server bridge. And we've hardened the IP, um, the, the IP interfaces. In the past, we had a Telnet port that was open. We've shut all that down. Uh, just to go in with regard to the penetration test, um, if you do have um, sites which uh, require uh, reports and or certificates, we can supply them, just con uh, contact uh, the local um, uh, field server representative and we can uh, get those to you. And when we went through our penetration test, um, it was quite an arduous task. And they actually wanted us to lock everything down with self signed certificates. And we pushed back and said, yes, we can offer self signed certificates. Um, the issue that we have is that many, I think in many sites, it's not required. And um, we do have a certificate within the unit that can be utilized that is updated every two years, if my memory serves me correctly. Um, so it is secure, or we could just use HTTP. But if you wanted a self signed certificate for that higher level of security, you can enable that. Obviously, when you get to site, you'd need to get hold of the more than likely the IT department, and you'd need to get them to sign the SSL certificate uh, digitally, which then be uploaded into the field server bridge would allow the field server to connect to that network. So it's an option that is available. So if you want it very secure, that is fine. And um, we can make that um, very secure if required. And our security doesn't end with the hardware. It goes up into our cloud as well. And the interesting thing is on Monday, we got our uh, test reports from our latest uh, penetration testing on our cloud. Uh, we're now reviewing them. Um, we've got a few minor issues which we'll go through. Um, we will resolve and do a final test, and then we'll make the uh, certificate and the uh, report available um, to customers. Next, I just want to touch on a couple of the vertical markets. It's markets that um, we've been very successful with in the past. And just to touch on the um, and the connectivity um, on those sites, especially data the data centers, um, extremely secure. You, know, you don't want anything to be hacked. Um, we're going to metering, UPS generators, HVAC. I was personally involved with um, Department of Energy. Um, DOE stipulated that all their data centers uh, need to have their carbon footprint. So obviously, in a um, data center, uh, HVAC. So we were utilizing DOE to get the, um, the HVAC data, which is back in IP, into the, um, the data center, and we pushed it onto SNMP. So therefore, they could um, then fairly easily measure their carbon uh, footprint of their data centers. Only automation, we've been in this market for many, many, many years. And there's so many um, disparate devices that need to be uh, connected and on or connect into a network, I should rather say. Industrial automation was a big side for us. And as I've mentioned, uh, in a previous application is connecting, as an example, a back an IP network into a Modbus TCP IP network. It could be Ethernet IP, um, what is whatever needs to be connected in there. Life safety, another market that we've been involved with many years. And as I've indicated, we're now seeing um, products in this market with Ethernet ports. So good application um, for the dual Ethernet port. 
and then the last market that covers all the previous ones because we can connect any one of those markets, data centers, building automation, industrial automation, life safety, uh, connect it up into the cloud. And the other market that we um, are very successful in, which is essentially mentioned each one of these verticals, is energy metering. Um, as you can see, we had mentioned in data centers and building, auto and building automation um, as uh, connecting energy meters. We, we've got a number of our customers connecting um, energy meters up into the cloud <clears throat> to do building analytics um, and to reduce the running costs of buildings. We're coming up to the end. Um, I just wanted to take the opportunity um, just to show, get you, show you a preview of what the field, the rebranded field server <clears throat> will look like. I'm sure you're aware that MSA um, required um, Serum Monitor in, um, in 2019. And our teams have been hard at work. Um, we've rebranded all our documents. Um, we've um, moved our website to MSA Safety, done a great job there. We've now going, uh, we're now, we're now got a project on rebranding all the, um, the fields of a product. And I, I think I firmly believe the team's done a great job in what um, products will look like this year, the changes to it. I think it, it's, a, it's a fresh look. Technology is all exactly the same. It's just a new look and feel um, to the product. We're getting up to um, half an hour and we come to the end. Um, Jenny, are there any questions? Um, Nothing in the chat right now, but if anyone has any questions, go ahead and type it in the Q&A and I'll be happy to answer, uh, tell Richard the question. Okay, just um, one of the questions that came up yesterday is that, um, will the uh, dual Eastern port be available in um, purple? Um, at the moment, it will not. There's a possibility later this year, um, as the demand uh, picks up, we will be we will make it available in purple. So at the moment, the Julius in a port is only available in, in a grey um, enclosure, but it is it is for the OEM market and our system integrator market. So we've got different part numbers um, for the Julius in a port. And if you you have requirements for it, please contact our um, anyone in our sales team, and they'll be able to assist you straight away. All right, there's a question. Can this product do true BACnet IP to BACnet IP routing? We, we do have a BACnet router. Currently, we have not added the, um, the dual Ethernet port to the BACnet router family. We have earmarked it to later this year to actually um, have the dual Ethernet port with the BACnet um, routing capabilities on top of it. So at the moment, no. Will it be coming down the pipeline? Yes, it will be. So therefore, we can do BACnet routing between um, two Ethernet ports and two serial ports with different protocols, uh, namely um, BACnet IP, BACnet Ethernet, and BACnet MSTP. Okay, they followed up example Symmetrix B3060. Oh, yeah, yeah, we were aware of that product and um, we, uh, we, yeah, it, 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 we are targeted to, to bring it out um, with uh, backnet writing on the uh, two Ethernet port. Okay. Any other questions, Jenny? That's it for now. Okay, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, much appreciated. Um, and we look forward to your follow up. Thank you very Thanks, much. Everyone. Right.